continuing on with the series of videos on the Ford Explorer I'm going to attempt to change the fuel pump today and I've done some research and rather than drop the tank out uh, there's a write up here on how to cut an access panel on the um, in the floor and I like this idea for several several reasons and I'll kind of go through those uh, as I work on it but this uh, form user here has a couple of these cars and he's done this modification and I think this is a good modification it doesn't really affect the structural integrity of the vehicle um, but it does give it a good access to this thing without dropping the tank out so he gives all the measurements here as to uh, exactly what I want to do. This looks like he goes down a little bit further here than really needed. But um, also I don't really see a reason to go up this high either. So yeah I think I'm going to do this and then what you do when you're done is you uh, you put a piece of metal over the top of it See, he covers it with a piece of sheet metal and he uses some self-tapping screws and silicone. So I like this idea. Um, I went on eBay shopping for a fuel pump and unlike vintage electronics, auto parts can be found at a very, very reasonable price. Um, they're so cheap I picked up two of them. This one here... Uh, Fifteen dollars shipped. Fifteen dollars one five. This one here, a Bosch Premium, forty-five dollars shipped. I figured since the fuel system was probably a little bit crappy, we would start with the uh, junk fuel pump, and then. Uh, after this one ran through a couple tanks of gas, I would change to the newer one, or if this one dies, it probably only has a life of 10 hours. Guess what country this probably comes from. Very good, extra special, happy fuel pump. Comes with a screen. One thing it doesn't come with is the electrical connectors. The Bosch, on the other hand, does not come with a screen, but it comes with all the electrical connectors. Yeah, see the Bosch comes with a whole like wiring harness, but no, no filter screen. And then they say the warranty is void if you don't put a new fuel screen. So China, for $15, gives you a new strainer, but Bosch, which is, I think is made in Mexico or something like that. Okay, the first thing I want to check uh, is the inertia switch, which all Fords have it. All cars, I think, have it in some form. It's basically a magnetic type ball switch where if there's an impact the little magnet comes off the the conductor and it shuts the fuel pump off. I believe it's in here. Okay, I was close. Basically it's right there. And there should be a button on top. I doubt that's the problem. I could ohm that thing out, but... There's a button on the top of it. I could ohm it out, but 
I seriously doubt that that's the problem. We know, or at least my experience is, when you let a car sit forever, the fuel pumps go bad. It's just a common thing. Also, you can hear the fuel pump relay clicking, which doesn't mean it's good, but at least it's a indicator that it's most likely good. I'll, I have the key on in the run position. I'll connect the battery. You'll hear the relays click. Then about a second later, you'll hear the relay, the fuel pump relay click off. So that's, that's the fuel pump prime. It's time to get the seat. Okay, so this is the back seat. Uh, they say in there to take the back seat out. Well, if I could take just a smaller one out, it would be pretty easy. But the problem is, is that this contraption right here looks like both back seats are are bolted all one piece, so I'd have to take the whole thing out. Uh, I could be looking at that wrong, but it sure looks like it to me. This looks pretty accessible to me. The fuel pump is right here. You know, if you step back and look at it, you know, and you come in here, the fuel pump is basically right here. I think I can probably get around this without taking the seat out. I'm pretty good with working in tight spaces, so I think I could probably probably do this. Uh, I'm going to take a look at his picture again. I almost hate to cut into this, but the thing about it is if I'm going to keep the car, then I'd like access. If I'm not going to keep the car, then what do I care? Fuel pumps produce, fuel pumps are basically like a big spark gap generator. It's impossible to use HF or AM radios in a car like a CB or ham radio with a fuel pump. Need to add a filter and the filter really should go, it's just a choke and a couple capacitors, the filter should really go in the tank right above the power going into the fuel pump. So if this works, if I end up keeping this car, I'd like to open this back up and add a uh, RFI filter to the fuel pump. I also like the serviceability of if I'm off-road or something and the fuel pump craps out, the $15 Chinese fuel pump or the $50 Bosch fuel pump, I have an extra fuel pump, I could just pull the seat forward, get in here and change it. I mean, it take less time to change a fuel pump than a tire with an access panel. So this is really a good idea. I know it botches the car up a little bit, but it's a 92, who really cares? It's kind of interesting about this is I'm seeing spot welds here, 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 here. So I don't know what that is, is that two pieces of metal layered together under there what what is this am I gonna have to break those what do they call those rose buds or whatever where they weld that huh so anyway basically you're cutting like like this here's what I'm gonna use um, I got a couple extra discs. I borrowed this from somebody. I oiled it. I don't think it's been oiled forever. So. This should uh, make short work of that. Got to go real slow and make sure I don't go through and cut anything. Got my face shield, got ear protection. We are safety certified, professional style. You can see the author of that post is dead on. Uh, this is real slow going because I'll tell you, a sawzall cuts through this thing like butter, but I didn't want to cut 
uh, this one here with a sawzall because of the lines and I didn't touch the lines. This metal is actually pretty thick. Uh, it's surprisingly thick. Now I could cut this with a sawzall. There's nothing. What I could probably do is slide a piece of metal down there. The only thing that's down here is, uh, what is this, the evap? evap line but this is quite open so what I'll do is I'll start a cut here with the grinder and then I'll just I'll just take the saws all and just zzz. this is double here, this is a double piece of metal, and I've been grinding on this for the better part of 15 minutes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sawzall and cut it off here. This is really thick. Sure wish this was fiberglass like a CRX. Would be a lot easier to just cut right up. Okay, this looks good. I think I can get that out of there, except the wire. Where does the wire go? So this metal is really thick right here. It's a really, really, really heavy metal on this vehicle. I'm surprised. So the lines will just pop right off and then I just take the uh, the twist lock and that thing should just pull right out of there but the problem is is the uh, wire I might have to crawl under it to get the wire okay it appears that this is the wire right here see that red thing up there so boy that's not going to be easy to deal with is it this is the thought I just popped that thing up off the rail it's still connected what I've done is I pulled it up this way as much as I can. I'm going to pop those fuel lines off and see if I can finagle this thing up out of there and leave the wire connected. I know that's a long shot. I can unplug the wire, but I'm going to try and do it without unplugging it. So these things, these clips, they just they pop up like this. They pull up. <clears throat> They basically just pull off of here and then there is a tool that slides in there and forces the little clip back. That's going to be a real pain too. So you have this thing here and what you do essentially is you push it up in there and this is something that's always easier said than done push that in there and then this should pull off. I managed to get the smaller one off. That was about two hours ago. I've been fighting with the bigger one. Finally I just decided I'd run down to the local auto parts store Pep Boys and I got this Chinese pot metal junk. Hopefully I can wiggle this around and get that one to pop off. I could go on a total rant about how these auto parts stores are going to a uh, inventory of, of pretty much just all accessories because nobody works on their cars anymore. It's just all chrome plated Chinese and plastic garbage. You know, I mean even the automotive chemicals, motor oil and stuff is shrinking you got this thing the size of a, a a supermarket and it's all these you know big low rims and junk and dvds and just all a bunch of garbage because no one works on their car anymore what i'm doing here this is a thing of the past finally two hours later now what I got to do is I got to spin this ring around, this locking ring, and hope I can get this out. I can start to smell the old um, stinky gas. Okay, a lot of PB Blaster 
and frustration and the ring is finally off. And the fuel pump is loose. I'm curious to see if there's Nice and slow. Nice and slow. We don't want to hurt. Oh boy, look at that. We don't want to hurt the float. I'm going to shut the camera off and do this one handed or two handed. There it is, and the tank is totally dry. Totally, totally dry. There it is. Uh, it's no problem to get it out of there without disconnecting the wire. Now I'm going to do a couple tests here. I'm uh, going to put the float all the way at the top, make sure the fuel gauge works. going to hook this up and I'm going to turn the key on. I'm going to set the camera by it. We'll see if it kicks on for prime. Put that right there. Gonna turn the key on. That's what I wanted to hear. And fuel gauge is going right up to the top. I'm pulling it down slowly. Uh, it's probably got a damper in it, so it doesn't... Ah, the nastiness. You know, I wonder if this tank was pretty much drained um, as part of the storage, like the battery was disconnected. This stuff doesn't even smell like gas. It smells like paint. Okay, Chino Pump is installed, and I found another problem. Regardless of if this works, I noticed that there's liquid in the float. That is not a float with liquid in it. What I'm going to do, I need a whole new sending unit for this if this car is any good. Um... I'm going to pop it back down in there and I'm going to see the pre the, this is the return line here with this little red thing on it. So the return line is the smaller of the two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the return line disconnected. I'm going to put five gallons of fresh fuel in it and I'm going to cycle it. Uh, enough to pump um, pump uh, fresh gas through the system. I should really change a fuel filter and flush it, but at this point this thing seems to be, I don't want to say a total loss, but I'm, I'm losing uh, I'm losing passion for it. I'll just put it like that. But yeah, this is liquefied okay I got two and a half gallons of gas in here I'm gonna try and get as much of this out of here as I can okay turn it on another click Off and on. no turn it on you're not all the way on turn it off okay turn it on okay off just back one click. I gotta disable that stupid beeping thing. Okay, on. 
off, on, there we go, off, on again, stand by one second, I gotta do something, this is not good, on, off, on, off, on, all right, on, off, this is fuel pump prime, okay, again, off, one more time. And we're gonna try and start it now. Stand by, off. Sure as nice coming off as going on. Okay, try and start it. Go ahead, crank it. It doesn't start. Doesn't crank? Do it again? Do I have to put it in park? Is it in park? It's the first time it's run on gasoline since 1999, float that sending unit shot with only two gallons of fuel in it but Thermostats either missing or stuck open because there's hot air blowing already. That's why it doesn't heat up. Bad as hell for a car to run it cold. It's just as bad as overheating it. Wire is put back in place, Eclipse are back on. Probably what I'll end up doing is running this vehicle if I decide to put it on the road. I gotta get a windshield, that's 75 bucks, and get a paperwork all done. Um, probably what I'll do if, if it seems to be roadworthy is I will uh, get a new sending unit for it. I'm sure I could find that whole assembly on eBay pretty cheap. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut a piece of sheet metal that's bigger than the hole and I will screw it down 
uh, drill some holes and put some self tappers in there. I'll bend this piece back down and what I'll do is I'll silicone the plate. I'll get some of that good uh, Permatex gray silicone. I'll clean this up real good. Clean it off with lacquer thinner, get it all cleaned up. I'll silicone a plate down on there, put self tappers around the outside and it'll be uh, accessible in the future. As far as doing this job, uh, it seems to me like it's a pretty high skill level job. It took quite a bit to do it. I don't know if I would recommend going this route as far as the shade tree uh, vehicle owner at home. Uh, I thought this. I thought I'd be done with this by noon, and this thing just said, "I'm going to eat every bit of your day. I'm not. I'm taking up all." 10 hours of sunlight or whatever we got right now and it's just about getting dark by the time I get cleaned up that's it so let's see here that battery is a little bit old uh, look at the gauge drop down now Where is this stupid thing? Where's my screwdriver? There. I don't need it. I don't want to hear it. I take it and stomp on it. The hotter this thing gets, the more it leaks. I noticed as I was watching through the video uh, a bit of unfinished business, which is, was this fuel pump actually bad? If there was no fuel in the tank, would I have heard the fuel pump? Which it probably burn up when I was running the thing on propane. But I went and I dug it out of the trash, which is pretty good because the trash was out at the curb and they hadn't picked it up yet. And the reason why I was assuming it was a pump is because the gas gauge was reading a quarter tank. So. Let's give this a shot. Okay, here we go. The big lead was plus. Yep, there's... There's power there. Yep. And yes, the pump is in fact dead.